Hey, how's it going YouTube? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs and um, I've got another little mini series here that I'm going to get started. Um, if you watched my most recent video, which was mail day number four, as part of my mail day pickups, I got a couple of Dreamcasts, three of them actually, in various uh, physical conditions. And this one I'm kind of the most interested in. It's definitely the grossest looking Dreamcast I've ever seen. It's absolutely dirty on the outside. We look at the back, it's dirty. The bottom is not terrible, but um, you can see there's something clearly sitting on top of it whenever this got in whatever condition it is. Additionally, when I open it up, it's absolutely filthy on the inside. And I suspect that this is, this might be smoke damage. Um, so there's gonna be a couple of challenges with getting this working. Firstly, um, I'm certain that this laser probably is beyond the point of repair. Uh, I'm going to try a couple quick things just to try and clean it, but um, I suspect I may have to borrow a laser from another system or order a replacement part online. Um, depends really how bad it is. So I'm going to open this up and we're going to thoroughly clean it. I just want to try something quickly. I've dipped a Q-tip in alcohol. I want to see if any of this will come off. And as you can see, it does. So. That's definitely encouraging. Now, the outside is another story. This outside part might not really come off very well, but uh, eh, it's possible even. Looks like I've kind of cleaned up a bit spot there. So we're gonna open this up, get started on trying to restore this console here. So first thing I'm gonna do to open this up, we pop the, um, the little network adapter off. So I see there's a little bit of corrosion on here already. Um, so I wonder, if this system also got wet. Um, in doing some testing, the system actually turns on and it does display video on the screen. However, I get no response from controllers at all. So it's possible that smoke damage in here has just covered the contacts for the controller to connect to, but it's also possible that there is a problem with the board that controls the controller ports. So we're gonna start just by opening this up firstly. So to do so, there are four Phillips screws located on each of the corners. One, two, three, and four. Using a different screwdriver, we just get started unscrewing these screws. Um, I like to, whenever I work on consoles like this, especially for the case screws, as you usually have to flip the system over to get the screws to come out, what I like to do is put it down on a towel, so a little bit of a softer surface, so that way the screws generally don't go bouncing everywhere. Now we see the inside. So the inside is not a whole lot better than the outside. Um, the inside of the case, the top lid seems to be okay, but look at the power supply. That power supply is black. It's, uh, I think it's been, it's smoke most likely that's gotten in here. So probably got sucked into the system and really dispersed everywhere. So we're gonna do our best to try and clean this out. Um, but like I said, at the end of the day, it is functional. So we don't need to go too in depth into it, but we need to just try and get, firstly, this looking better, and then make sure that the laser will actually read discs and that the controller ports work. So um, we're gonna continue disassembling everything here. So I'm gonna set the main part of this aside and work on the lid since the lid definitely needs some cleaning. So first thing we'll do, get this little piece of foam out of here. Um, the foam is glued or stuck on with a piece of two-sided tape. So when you rip it off, just try not to rip the foam, foam too much and set that aside. Then there are a couple buttons. So this is your power button here. Just pinch the two corners in and it should pop right out. You might need to use a screwdriver to push it out like that. There's power. Uh, the LED, or the, uh, I don't know what you call it, a diffuser, I guess, for the LED is located right here, and this needs to be unscrewed. So this actually uses a pretty small Phillips head screw. So I'm going to use my precision bits on this, as I can't get my regular screwdriver in there. So these screws, they have a little bit of a domed tip to it. Let's see if we can uh, focus nicely on that. There we go. So the tip is rounded, or the top, sorry, 
and the tip of it is squared off. So just kind of make a note of that to yourself so that you know which screws go back where. Um, one thing that might be easy to help keep track of everything is to use something like an egg carton and you can actually label each individual part where it came from so that way you know for sure that everything's going back the way it came. And otherwise when you disassemble something just take a mental note of where it came from so that you know where it needs to go back to. So right now we're working on disassembling the lid. So these are the hinge pieces and they have the same types of screws as the uh, as that LED diffuser piece. So that again you can see kind of where the smoke got into that. So we're going to clean all the parts in here. So everything we're going to completely disassemble this and hopefully we can get it looking a lot better. Um, so again this is part of the hinge. This has a little wheel here that is greased up and it provides resistance to the hinge or the lid so it doesn't just fly right up. I'm actually not going to clean this part as firstly you don't see it and I don't want to get water in there and cause further problems rusted up or seize it or anything like that. This hinge as well or spring sorry I'm not going to clean this spring as uh, again we don't want to get it rusty or cause it to break or anything like that. So I'm just going to set these two pieces over to the side with the network adapter. And then the lid now should come right off. And all we have left is the eject mechanism. So again, there's a little spring on this. Take the spring off, set it aside. You don't really need to clean the spring. And then there are a couple screws. So I'm going to take these screws out again using your smaller screwdriver. These ones have the washers on them so you remember when reassembling we have to put the washers back on over the eject button. So this piece um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this as it is kinda dirty and you might see this through the uh, top of the shell so we'll get that off and that's the lid completely disassembled. So collecting all the plastic parts, everything that we want to wash, and just set all this aside. And we're going to get working on the bottom half of this now. So this is the rest of it. Um, what I like to do first before I work on anything, just you turn the power on, and it will help discharge some of the built-up current in this. Um, especially in the power supply here, the capacitors can hold power, and you don't want to short anything with a screwdriver or your finger and cause either power to go to places that it's not supposed to or risk electrocution. So um, it's always a good practice on anything that you work on. Um, so I'm going to disconnect the power supply from the uh, rest of the system and that's this connector right here. Then we're going to work on removing the power supply. So I believe there's just two screws, one in the back corner right here. Now these screws that I just took out, um, despite the top being black, um, they're actually brass. So again, keep a note to yourself that the brass screws go on the inside. Um, the black ones go on the outside. I think that's all that holds this on. And there's also, there's a little clip right here. Make sure you release that so you don't damage this board. And then this whole part should just lift right up. There we go. So that is our power supply. This little bit of plastic shielding, um, and it just feels gritty at the top. You can see when I wipe it, I can wipe some of that smoke damage away. So that's also going to get washed with the rest of this. Um, now from here, again, you just unscrew everything you see. So power switch up on the top corner here, or bottom corner. Remove the screws. These screws are the same as the screws that held the power supply in place, so um, they can be put together. It doesn't matter if you put one back in the wrong spot. Um, next, we're going to disassemble these screws here at the bottom around the controller ports, and this is the board that will control how the whether the contr or the uh, controller ports work or not. So this one, I am 
questioning whether or not it needs repair. Uh, we're going to remove these screws first. So do note that the screws that I'm removing right now are slightly longer than the other uh, screws holding down the board. So again, put those separately. Make a note that the long screws have to come back in to hold these controller ports back. All right, so that's unscrewed. There's a couple other connectors here. So if we look right here, there is a ribbon connector which has to be removed. And this, just be careful with this. All you do is you pull straight up and it will be disconnected. Lastly, when you lift this up, this screw's still in place here. There we go. So what you have to do, you actually pull it back first and then it will come up. There is a connector right here, which I think transmits power to the fan. So make sure you disconnect that and then this whole thing will be freed from the board. So we're gonna continue removing the screws on the board. And again, just take out everything that you see. I'm actually going to skip ahead until these are out as I'm sure you understand how to use a screwdriver. I don't think you need to watch me do them all. Okay, so screws have been removed. So we're going to take the fan off. Um, the fan, again, probably doesn't need a lot of cleaning. Uh, again, we don't want to introduce water into the fan mechanism and there is a control board in here. So we're definitely not cleaning it with water. Um, so I'm actually just going to set this part aside. Um, next, we're going to remove this laser assembly. So we need to be careful that you don't break the connector on this. So you, what you do here, you carefully lift it back. And then there's a ribbon connector which you can pull straight out like that. So it will connect on the bottom here into this connector right here. So you just have to kind of get your finger in there and pull and try your best not to damage everything. Next, actually, that probably didn't need to come out now that I look at it. So this whole component here will lift right off. There we go. Now, we've um, uncovered a couple more screws with that laser assembly being removed. So remove the screws, set them aside, same as we've done already. And now these screws are black screws. Same as the two that were in this corner right here. And there is one more, I think, right here that was black. So again, just complete, just lift them all up. And by this point, you should be able to remove the shielding, which is covering the board. There we go. So we've removed the board entirely. We're gonna take this RF shielding from the bottom out. And this is actually in good shape. It doesn't need cleaning, so I'm just gonna set it aside for now. Um, dump any screws that are sitting in here out onto the towel. Again, that's where the towel comes in handy so that screws don't go bouncing all over the floor. Um, the front part of the controller port can now be removed as well. And all of this is gonna go into the sink with some soapy water and we'll try clean it gently with just soap and water first. Um, there's no need to use harsher chemicals such as bleach or anything else unless soap and water really isn't cutting it, in which case bleach can help with smoke damage removal. Um, this part right here, the shielding over top, you can clean it or you could leave it. It's entirely up to you. I'm leaning towards just leaving it be. Um, it is connected using uh, thermal paste to the processors on the board here. So I don't really want to remove it unless need be. Um, the board underneath, just kind of trying to look between the gap here. It's tough to see on camera, but it looks still to be in good shape. It's green. It seems okay. So I might just give this a gentle wipe with some rubbing alcohol, but otherwise leave this part alone. Side. And then disassemble this laser unit. So... We've already removed the connector there. So now there's the power connector which goes 
through into the bottom. So there's a couple screws that are going to have to be removed to get access to this. So this will allow, should allow the entire unit to come apart. I just have to figure out how. There we go. So it just lifts up just like so. And it seems to be taped into place. So this layer of tape on the top will have to come off. And what do we know? It reveals another screw. Two screws. So we're going to remove these screws as well. And now it should finally let us completely disassemble this laser assembly. There we go. So we'll put those screws to the side. Now these screws are actually different than everything else. So they have a round top on them, but they're not the same screws that we're holding on the, say, the eject switch. So we're going to keep these all separate to themselves. Um, there's one more screw, which we've just identified right here, which needs to now be removed. And that should allow us to lift all of these parts off now. So we're going to carefully pull this power connector out of the guides. You want to be careful not to snap the plastic here. And then we can lift the, the plastic enclosure down and remove the power connectors from the board. So this board shows a little sign of smoke damage to it as well around here mainly but otherwise it's not in terrible shape so for the most part I'm going to leave it alone I'm going to clean this ribbon connector as these uh, definitely need to have a clean connection but we're just going to set this aside and this part right here now can be should be able to disconnect from the plastic yeah there is, looks like there's a little release. Oh, there's another screw now. So we're going to take these screws off. And being careful not to break anything, we can separate it from the metal mount here. So. This I'm going to clean as it is pretty dirty on the inside. This I'm going to clean as it's obviously pretty dirty. This part I'm going to leave alone. It doesn't need to be cleaned. So what we're doing, going to do on this part here is actually pretty straightforward. On the top, there are two very small precision crosshead screws. We're just going to remove these and I think the top layer of this should lift right off. There we go. So that's really all that I need to clean off that. Um, we do need to clean this laser mechanism as well, but I'll be coming back afterwards to do that with um, some rubbing alcohol. I'm hopeful that we can get this working properly and I don't have to replace this component by itself. So we're gonna set this aside with the rest of the main board and I'm gonna bring everything up to the sink and start uh, soaking it. Alright, so I've had my Dreamcast parts soaking in the sink for a little bit here. So I'm going to show you how it's going to look when I start to clean it out. So, um, let's start with this part right here. So, it's recommended, or I recommend anyways, um, just use either a paper towel or some kind of disposable cloth. I'm using a shop towel right now for this. Uh, as I'm sure if I use a good like, kitchen cloth, I'm going to ruin it. So after soaking it, as you can see here, I'm going to work on this side right here. The smoke stains are coming right off. So this uh, soap and water 
soaking really seems to be doing the trick. So I'm going to clean this all up. I'm not going to make you watch me scrub an entire console. So I'm going to clean it up and trying to get into the sides, the corners with a toothbrush as well. And we'll see how it looks in a few minutes. All right, so this is what we've got after just a general wiping. So obviously it looks better on the inside. However, it's certainly far from clean, um, especially around this corner. So what I'm going to do now is using some isopropyl alcohol and just a paper towel, I'm going to wipe down a part of it. So this corner, for example, and I'm going to use a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Oops. So I accidentally ripped a chunk off, but after wiping it, giving it a little pressure, this color is starting to come off again. So you have to keep reapplying this alcohol and then keep scrubbing, but it will come up. As you can see, this corner is looking better already. So I'm going to keep going on all of this and see how I can get it looking and uh, hopefully it won't take too long. Okay, so here's a quick update. Um, I just, I've just been at this for a minute or two and already it looks much better in the areas that I've cleaned. So all I'm doing here, hitting it with some rubbing alcohol and then a magic eraser and it's taking this color and damage right off. Alright, so I finished the first uh, pass of scrubbing on this thing and most of the significant damage has come out. Um, there's still some areas, like it's tough to get into these corners, which are going to need more work, but I would say this definitely worked pretty well. A couple of things if you're going to use something like a magic eraser, be careful around these logos. Uh, magic erasers are basically sandpaper cubes, so they will take logos and anything printed on right off. So you have to be careful with that. Don't go too hard on those or you're going to lose the logos. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of these parts and uh, we'll see how it turns out. So for documentation purposes, I want to have a quick little before shot of this Dreamcast lid. So this is before I, uh, I just rinsed it off, uh, give it a little wipe down, but this is still definitely uh, stained. So I'm going to try hit it with the magic eraser and alcohol and see what happens with that. And this is after. Um, so as you can see, there's still a bit of a line here where the smoke has stained the plastic. Um, and I'm going to try a couple of things later to try and really brighten this up as much as I can. But that, that overall just is so much better than it was when it first got it in the box there. You remember uh, it's covered with all the crap in the corner here and it was just really dark all around the whole thing. So it does look a lot better. Obviously it doesn't look great yet, but it's getting there. So again, continuing on and uh, hopefully we can get this looking good. Okay, so I've uh, cleaned up all the parts here and I have a couple tips for uh, someone looking to do this same thing. So this is currently what I'm sitting at with the shell. Um, I got some of the internal parts that are done and as you can see I have a looks like a battlefield of wounded magic erasers. Um, first tip is buy actual Mr. Clean magic erasers. I bought the no-name ones and they suck. They fall apart, they break, um, and it's not even because they're wet or anything like that. <coughs> Excuse me. I've used the real magic erasers before and they're a lot more pliable and just better. So spend the extra dollar and buy real magic erasers. Secondly, buy more than just two. Um, I've gone through an entire one already and it's just disintegrated and I still have a lot more to do. Um, I have discovered, however, that using, after I've cleaned up all the crap off, the big crap off this, using just a combination of a little bit of water and the magic eraser actually helped take almost all the rest of the coloring off. I haven't done the back yet, so you can still see a bit of the yellowing there. But I'm going to try and do that same treatment on the rest of the shell, and hopefully we can get it looking as good as this lid does. You can barely see where that... Uh, square uh, line where all the yellowing stopped was. Okay, so I think I've gotten this about as good as I think I can. Um, there's still, so still some very minor yellowing, but um, I mean, look at this, look at this disc cover. It's pretty damn good if I do say so. Um, inside is kind of challenging to get in here. I really can't get my magic eraser in there. So there are some areas where there is still some yellowing evident. However, really not much on the outside. Down around this logo, it's still slightly yellowed and in front of the Sega logo because I really can't scrub too hard on these or those will come right off. 
Um, otherwise, you know, kind of down in there, again, I can't get in that. But all the, all the exterior surfaces are pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna begin reassembly here. Um, first thing I think we wanna try and do is put the lid into place. So just loosely sit it in there, and then we're gonna reattach the, uh, the gear here with the spring that belongs there, and that will go in place right there. So this gear wheel is gonna to have to sit right in the hole on the side of this door there. And same thing with the other part of the, uh, the other hinge, which I have right here, this hinge here. So I'm gonna put that in there, again, sitting nicely in place there on the hole. So I'm gonna get those installed and show you what that looks like. Okay, so the spring assembly, or the uh, lid assembly is in place. Um, you wanna make sure that the spring is in place so that when you release the lid, it naturally flaps up. Next thing we're going to do is put this little piece right here that's used to eject the lid in place. Now, there are two screws that hold this part together, and they're the ones that have those big washers on them. So that's this one right there, and this one right here. So I'm going to put those into place, and as well, there's this spring that holds it in place. So I'm going to have those put on, and I'll be right back. All right, so... That piece is now in place, so when I hit the open button, door opens. Last piece on this lid is this LED piece. So that sits right there. And again, there's two small domed screws that's gonna hold that into place. So that's one and where is it here? There's two. So once those are in place, um, that's it, I believe, for this lid. So there's one, there's two. So lid is now reassembled. So we're gonna put that aside and onto the bottom part. So we insert the main board into place, it just sits on top of this shielding that was already down. So that's in there. You have to get these ports lined up into the holes down here first. So line it up and then you just drop it into place. All right, so all those screws are in place. Um, I've put the black screws all along the right side here. So one, two, and three, and then three more along the back. And then these two here are brass screws at the moment. We're not putting anything into here yet along the front, as this is where you're going to install the controller port. Um, so now is the tricky part, and that's gonna be reassembling the laser assembly. So um, what we need to do is put this off to the side and gather the parts that go into the laser assembly. So that's gonna be this, that, this, this, shielding here, and the board. So I'm gonna kinda of get it all lined up, show you how it's gonna work, but a couple of things that you wanna make note. This connector right here connects to the main board which is already installed, so it's gonna face down. This goes underneath the main board, and there's a hole in it where the connector can be accessed. So that's how you know kinda of how to line that up properly. The, um, this shielding will go over top of it all like this, and there's a hole in this so that, there we go. Oh, you have to fit that kind of just into place just right. But there's a hole so that the ribbon connector can come through here and that the lid switch can come through here. So I'm gonna get it all kind of lined up just right and then I'm gonna show you what it is that we're gonna to do to assemble it. Okay, so I have this generally put together, so I'm gonna show you what I did here. Um, the easiest way to line it up properly is you take this board. Um, first thing you need to do is connect the laser assembly power supply to it. So if you look back on the board here, there's two connections here. So connect it and it go should go through this loop on the heavy metal plate. Um, then making sure that it goes through that hole, flip it around and you can line up. There's a little nub right here. Line that up with the hole in the board and that will keep it so that the board lines up with the screw holes. 
Then this uh, thinner RF shielding will go over top of it all and kind of snap just into place like that. Then you have some screws to assemble. So these screws are going to be the smaller round tip ones just like that with the bigger heads and they hold everything together like so. So once you get one of them in together it'll make sure the board is held into place where it's supposed to be and it shouldn't wiggle or anything get out of the place. One, two, and just a word of note if you find yourself trying too hard to screw these parts together just stop. Um, if you start stripping the screws or screwing into something maybe that you're not supposed to be, um, just stop. Better to try it again than to actually damage something. And I think I have one more. Right there. There we go. Okay, so those screws are all in place now. Now, um, you can take this tape that was kind of sitting here and just fold it back over so it covers up those screw holes. Um, just like so. And then we can flip this over. So you'll note that on here, there is three little mounts just like that. Three holes, one, two, three. And you'll orientate it so that it lines up with these three holes. So there's a couple tricky parts to do to this. Firstly, you have to reconnect this ribbon connector, which we disconnected. Um, it connects right into the laser assembly like so. So you need to get it in flat and straight. And it's kind of tricky to do because you have to hold it at an odd angle. All while making sure that you don't pull too much on the ribbon connector on the other side. So I'm gonna kind of fight with that for a second. So I almost made a mistake here. I forgot to put this part on. So this part will just kind of slide into place like so. It's gonna have a hole for the power cable to come out the side and I don't think it's actually screwed together. It doesn't look like it yet. So right now we're just gonna sit it into place and then line it up like so. You need to line it up so that when we do finally fix it how it's supposed to be, the ribbon cable comes up through this guide right here and then sits into place here. Now, of course, this makes it even more frustrating to try and put the ribbon connector into place. So again, something you're just going to have to kind of fight with until you get it just right. So I'm going to work with that. And lastly is this top piece. So this is going to sit just in place and you have these small precision screws at the bottom which are going to hold it into place here. So using the precision screwdriver, we assemble this like so. There, so that's now sitting in place nicely. And it is time to assemble it to the board, or add it to the board. So now that we have this whole laser assembly pretty much assembled, um, time to put it into the rest of the shell. So we've got the bottom half of our shell here, and we're gonna line it up. So we wanna make sure this connector right here is gonna be hooked into this properly. So the best way to do that is, if you look on this tab, there's two holes, one where a screw goes and one which is a little smaller right there. Um, line it up with the little post that's right here and the rest of it should really just fall into place. So that's now in place there. And we just screw it in using the remaining brass screws. So I think there are three screw holes for this. 
So one here, one here. And then in the corner here, right there. So now that that's in, um, time to put the uh, power supply in place. So power supply is going to sit to the side right here, but you need to make sure that this piece of uh, plastic sits underneath it. The purpose of this, I think, is to make sure that none of these contacts are shorting against the uh, the bottom of the uh, shielding here. So it um, gets installed this way. There's a little hole in the plastic right here and there's a plastic post on the shielding right here. So make sure that that lines up and then you just simply line up the power port on the back with the notch in the back of the shell here and then push firmly on top of this white component here. That puts the pins in place and makes sure that it's uh, firmly connected. It will snap into place. You just want to give it a little small push around the board just to make sure everything's sitting flush. If it's sitting up in certain areas, um, then it might not be connected properly or it might be prone to breaking should it be dropped or anything like that. And then we're just going to screw it together. There are at least two screws. I thought there was three. Let me just double check it here. Nope, just two screws which hold this together. So next is going to be the um, the controller ports. So I had cleaned these ports out with a toothbrush and rubbing alcohol. So I haven't replaced the resistor like I said we might. Um, I think based on testing the resistor is probably okay. I suspect the smoke uh, or the soot and the smoke residue probably was causing a bad connection. So we're going to put this in place loosely, hook it up, and we're going to test it before I actually fully assemble the shell. So to hook this up, you need to you need to put it in kind of at an angle. So you point the front of it down like so, so that you can get the ports into the plastic front here. There we go. And then there's a ribbon connector, which will need to be firmly put into place. Just making sure it's going in flat and straight. Um, it's a good idea to probably put in... Actually, you know what? We're going to put them all in. I have faith that a cleaning is all that these ports needed, so we'll install these screws and fully hook this up. And if need be, if we need to actually replace that, fusible resistor, we'll just have to unscrew this part of the board. All right, so only a couple pieces left, um, one of them being this fan. Now the fan sits on these mounts right, oops, I had it backwards, right like this. There we go, like this, and plugs into the oh, kind of in the shadow here, and plugs right into the board here. So I find it's easier to plug the fan in and then line it up with the mounts, so just like that. And then, in order to screw it together, you need your precision screw bit, and it uses these small um, dome-tipped screws just like that so one on each side of this fan and two and then the final part is going to be the power switch power switch goes right in this corner here and it will attach, it rides along the side of the main board and attaches right here. So, just like that. 
I suspect actually this cord is supposed to go under the power supply. I'll have to double check. So for now, I'm just gonna kinda tack it into place with these screws so that I can test the system. Uh, once I confirm that it's working properly, then I will go back and actually reinstall it properly so that the cord is hidden. Okay, so I think we're ready to actually give this a try now. The last piece, it's not really a requirement, but snap it into place and that's the, uh, the uh, online adapter. Um, this actually, I think I'm going to clean this up a bit still because it's still kind of yellowed and smoky, so um, I'll do that later. But now I think we've gone enough that I can test to see if the uh, this laser assembly works or not. So that's one of the problems that I wanted to see was whether or not whether or not this will actually read discs. So time to go. Get to bring it over to the TV and test it out. All right, so I've got it hooked up to my TV here, and we're about to test a couple of games. So again, I'm gonna try starting with an original OEM Sega Dreamcast game. So I know that this works. Um, it's an original Sega game, so we're not worried about whether or not it will read a burnt disc or anything like that. So as a refresher from last time, I wanna see that the VMU on this controller flashes when I turn it on and of course that I get a display in power. So power on, and there it did flash. So I'm actually getting a connection to the controller. Okay, so just to show you that the controller does in fact work. We have the uh, sad panda on the VMU. Select, now hopefully it will actually read a game which doesn't look like it is. Please insert game disc. So if I eject this, it's not spinning. So we're gonna open this up and I wanna double check to make sure that the disc close, or the lid close switch is working properly. All right, so I have uh, taken the lid off and I still have the disc in here. So I'm at the main screen now. Let me show you something quickly. So first thing, a little safety, whenever you have this opened and plugged in, be very careful around the power supply on the left side here. Um, it's very easy to get shocked if you touch the wrong part. So right up here I want to push this switch and as soon as I do the disc starts spinning. So this laser assembly is getting um, power but the laser is not doing anything and I'm going to show you what it looks like without the disc. So you can see that laser moving but the actual part itself is not. So it's possible again that it's possible that there's a poor connection in there, which I may have to disassemble the laser in order to access. But it's also possible this whole laser needs to be replaced due to buildup of uh, smoke and dirt and grime and stuff. So um, we're gonna have to get back to the drawing table and take a look at that. However, um, I think you would agree with me in saying that this is a much better looking system than. Uh, when it first came in here, you saw it covered in smoke with a big mark along the front of it where part of it was white and the rest of it was dark. So um, if anything else, uh, this has been a good opportunity to show how to restore the look of a system. Now I still have to fix that laser, but I think I'm going to make that part two of this series. So that's going to be it for part one. Uh, part two, I'm going to go in depth into troubleshooting why it's not reading a disc here. So... Um, Thanks a lot for watching so far into this series. Um, I hope that you may be able to use some of these uh, ideas and tips I've provided to clean up your own systems, or if you happen to find something that is smoke damaged, a um, couple ways to really go about trying to restore that. Uh, I must say this does look actually really good. Um, I'm gonna pause for just a second and grab my own personal Dreamcast. So on the left here is the Dreamcast that I use for myself, and Honestly, looking between the two, if I didn't tell you from this view which one is smoke damaged, you may have a difficult time telling. I mean, when I get really close, you might find some small hints of yellow that kind of still are stuck on, but overall it looks really good. I must say I'm very impressed with how this turned out. So 
Once again, um, thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned for part two where I try and tackle the uh, issue with the disc reading.